Great. Uh, hi, hello everyone. Uh, my name is, uh, is Guillaume Brassard. Uh, I'm a director of engineering at Autodesk uh, in charge of the Shadrid product line. Uh, I'm here today to share experience of some of the learnings uh, we made in our journey to open source uh, a commercial product uh, that is mature and well established uh, in the field, namely called RV, uh, under the umbrella of the Academy Software Foundation. Uh, so we talked a little bit about RV in previous talk at ASWF, uh, what it is. Uh, so today I really wanted to focus on something a little bit different. Uh, so after resuming a little bit what RV is, uh, I want to talk about the reason uh, that pushed us to open source RV, uh, the approach we took to get there at a high level, and the learnings that we made uh, along the way. So first of all, uh, let me summarize quickly what RV is, uh, as it would help understand the challenges we faced. So RV was acquired in, uh, by Autodesk in 2015, uh, roughly six months after the acquisition of Shotgun. Uh, it's a high performance image and sequence playback tool. It offers accurate color representation, large file support uh, as OpenEXR and guaranteed playback rate at high resolution, as well as local media access. It's mostly used in post-production dailies for review and approval workflows with supervisors and executives. Its plugin architecture and powerful configurable graph engine allows studios to evolve and adapt the tools to their pipeline. And that's really, I think, the key feature that made it very, very interesting for us to open source as part of the Open Review Initiative. Uh, RV was originally sold as a standalone product, uh, but it's now available at no additional cost through a ShutGrid subscription. Um, and um, very recently, like, like Eric uh, mentioned, uh, on January 18, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were very pleased to, uh, to announce that we successfully open source uh, RV under the ASWF initiative, uh, under the Open Review initiative. So I just want again to congratulate the team, uh, Roger, that, it here, that is here today, but uh, more of the folks in the Montreal office uh, for that awesome feats. A lot of work behind that, and we're very proud of it. So uh, if RV is so great and well adopted in the industry, uh, why the hell is that just giving it away? Uh, open, RV, uh, open sourcing RV made sense for both Autodesk and the RV user. Uh, so open sourcing RV allows us to leverage the community to accelerate product feature development. Uh, and once open source, uh, it becomes easier for, for us uh, and the people that will collaborate with open RV now to actually uh, establish priorities with customers, and to partner on the materializations of the feature and improvements that they need. The possibility of opening RV uh, has been discussed multiple times internally and externally. It's something that uh, we discuss with clients uh, when the days of RV were a little bit more blurry. Uh, people were trying to push us to do it. Uh, and I think that this time the stars were aligned. Uh, so Autodesk was ready for it. The community was ready for it, uh, and ASWF was really the rightful home for RV. Uh, so the timing with the Open Review Initiative was uh, was perfect. Uh, along those lines, too, Autodesk strongly believes that uh, we will all benefit of the effort of promoting developing uh, open standards. And uh, for me, uh, as a former developer and working with a team, I, I, it's it's a really energizing experience too, uh, to be able to collaborate with our customers in a very different way than when you're selling a commercial product. Uh, and the kind of collaboration we have with, with, with customers is, is, is very, very, very interesting. So uh, our approach. Um, so uh, the approach on which we executed was pretty simple. So the in the first phase, we, we, would, we wanted just to remove any blockers preventing us from uh, open sourcing RV. Uh, for, for RV, it mostly meant removing proprietary codecs, uh, video outputs, uh, as well as the shut grid integration as it contained uh, Autodesk proprietary code. In the second phase, uh, we would work on reintegrating blockers removed in phase one, uh, with the intent of bringing the open source and the commercial version as close as possible to each other. We will also heavily invest in creating that new collaboration with the ASWF community, uh, leading herself the evolution of OpenRV. 
Uh, it's important to underline here that making RV open source uh, is not the end of the road for Autodesk. Uh, we're leading the TSC like, uh, like uh, Eric uh, explained. Uh, we are also part of the ORI TSC, so uh, our, our, our commitment is really to continue to maintain and contributing to both favor of RV. The approach with the, in the technical front uh, can be split in two, in, in two phases. So uh, there was a bunch of foundational work that needed to happen up front, uh, code sanitization at the beginning, removing everything that was dead code, uh, comment that we didn't, didn't want it to see uh, go out there in the wild. Uh, and, uh, and, and one thing that we decided to do is also spend a lot of time into improving the build system. So uh, a little bit like we've seen for, uh, for DreamWorks before, uh, we migrated to CMake, uh, which, uh, which we will see later on uh, turned out to be something that, uh, that helped us pretty much. So we really focused on that foundational work first before actually moving to the real open source work, uh, which was completing the componentization work, uh, which was an easy task because uh, the guy at Tweak uh, really structured the software in a way that it was almost uh, the perfect product for us to, to open source. Uh, there was not a lot more to do in, in, in the competition field, but uh, we still had a couple of things to do. Uh, and then really getting on that work of um, removing or extracting everything that was not open source friendly. Um, so as we will see later, that foundational time, uh, the, that time we spend on the fund, foundational work uh, really help on later, uh, and I'll explain why. So the learnings. Uh, one of the key things we learned in the course of the project is to clearly state the intent of what we were trying to do. Uh, there are multiple ways and reason to open source, and we found out it was creating confusion internally, especially when collaborating with legal and marketing, uh, and, and and trying to, uh, to 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 collaborate with those non-technical functions. Um, the decision to finally open source was made rapidly, and we open source, right? It, we figure that everything knows what it means and that we're all going the same direction. It's exactly, it's not exactly always true. So for OpenRV, uh, I underlined three key intent that unsqualified uh, significantly help us collaborate together. The first thing is that we wanted both version RV and OpenRV to be as similar as possible. So we consider different approach, maybe extracting just a graph engine and just open sourcing that. Uh, but quite rapidly, we decided that we wanted to open source the old product uh, and that uh, our North Star intent would be that they would be as identical as possible, minus maybe some functionality that we would like to remove uh, or let user activate themselves. The second thing was that we wanted to get the code in the community as fast as possible. Uh, and for that, we were willing to strip functionalities uh, or even ship a partially functional product, which unfortunately fortunately we didn't have to do, uh, to met a faster release date. Uh, and the reason is that one of the key reasons we wanted RV to be out there is for our customers to see the code and actually be able to collaborate to it. Um, often we are having that type of collaboration with customers where we open up or open source code so they can develop by themselves. We didn't add that for RV and our customers really wanted that. And the third thing is that we underline quite rapidly, especially with the legal team, uh, that there was no real trade secrets in RV or technology that we wanted to keep a hold on, uh, which really facilitate later on the discussion when we were saying, hey, yes, we are open sourcing the whole product, uh, which legal team are always a little bit frisky about. Uh, but by making sure and making clear with them uh, that there was no such technology breakthrough in RV, uh, that RV Strange was around its design, its architecture, its customizability more than anything else, uh, really helped simplify the discussion uh, with the legal and the strategy team. So once those things were clarified, uh, we could get things moving at a way faster pace. In a lot of ways, RV was the perfect product to open source for us uh, because the code base was well structured and the plugin architecture meant that the code was already mostly componentized and isolated. Uh, still, one of the one good decision that the team made was to solidify the foundation even more. So uh, we invested a lot in the foundation. Uh, the team spent a meaningful portion of the development time uh, rebuilding the build system. 
just to give an example, it took us about four to five months of development to uh, to make open and open RV alive, and re re revamping the build system probably was half of it. Um, we hesitated at the beginning because of that. We knew it would be a big journey, but uh, we had an aggressive timeline, and we managed to get to it in the end because of that decision. Like any development work, uh, when open sourcing a product, you will hit road bumps. And we hit some, uh, and the pre-ground work that we did on the, on the build system really helped us uh, get the flexibility uh, to be inventive and reactive enough to solve our problem. Uh, an example of that is uh, the, the license scanning uh, that we had to go through before actually being able to, uh, to give the code to ASWF. So um, for license scanning, we were using the same tool at Autodesk than they wanted to use uh, at ASWF, uh, a tool called SNCC. Uh, and because we were using the same tool, we say, well, it's going to be easy. We know the answer already of what's going to, to go out of the analysis. It's going to be as clean as we have it on our side. Well, guess what? It was not. Uh, so the configuration was not exactly the same. Uh, and uh, because of different factor, we ended up knowing just a couple of days before uh, when we wanted to release that there was some component uh, that uh, were not deemed acceptable for uh, Apache 2 under uh, the license model under which we wanted to release our product. Uh, and because we had migrated to CMake, because we had uh, done all that foundational work on making sure it was componizable and easy to extract stuff. Uh, we were able to um, to react quite rapidly. The team was able to react quite rapidly in a couple of days uh, to mitigate the problem. Uh, another key to access this uh, was rootless prioritization. So alongside with our clarified intent of getting the code out there as fast as possible, uh, we were able to shorten the development time significantly. Uh, so there are some of the art problems that we had to resolve that we decided to push to phase two, uh, knowing that some functionality would be missing, uh, but that it will allow us to get there faster. Uh, and when you open source things, sometimes it's easier to do, to do so in an open source, real open source environment versus doing it in a corporate environment. So there's also some of those decisions that we made uh, that, uh, that were because actually it will be easier to do so now that we are uh, under ASWF and that we can talk with them and decide with them what's the right approach to share some uh, components that we actually extracted out. Uh, the, the, the font initial work and the prioritization we did gave us the flexibility to be inventive and reactive uh, when we had some of those blockers. Um, another example is that uh, there's actually different ways uh, that we extracted no, uh, non-open source friendly component from the RV code base. Um, and, and keeping in mind that flexibility uh, is, is key. So when you have non-open source friendly component, the initial answer is that, oh, we need to replace those components. Well, it's not the only answer. Uh, you can use, uh, you can fetch those dependencies using your CMake system. Uh, you can leverage uh, Git submodule. Uh, there's a lot in the panoply of, of, of different options that you need to, to actually consider that are all vetted solution depending on the context. On the non-technical front, uh, we also learned a lot. We knew that open source brought new constraints and challenges uh, that you don't have to deal with with commercial products. Uh, but we learned that open sourcing cross organization also brings an additional complexity. Uh, different organizations can have conflicting sets of requirements. Uh, a good example of that is that uh, when we open source uh, project as part as uh, the Autodesk open source, open source group, we accept LGBL licenses. Uh, but as Eric stated, uh, Eric stated clearly before, uh, the mandate for Ori and the, the, the charter under which we were, we decided that Apache 2 will be the most limited license we will go, be going through. Uh, and we knew that, but because most of our discussion with, were, were with our own legal team, we kind of forget that at one point, uh, which meant that a bit too late in the project, we realized, hey, those LPGL licenses that some components are using, are not deemed to the project. So we had to react quickly. And there again, uh, the flexibility we had gained uh, with our migration to the CMake system really helped us uh, get through that without too much problem. 
So I don't, I, I won't get into the details of the legal learning, the product learning we did. I listed a few here, uh, but I guess my my recommendation would just be like, don't take anything for granted. Every, uh, even the thing that you think you know that your organization think they know, uh, when you're collaborating with another entity to open source stuff, even those things that you think are true may no longer be true. I wanted to close that, that, that small sharing session uh, by an item that totally eluded us when we started on this journey. Uh, open sourcing also means losing control over something you used to have full control over. And related to that, there are things that you need to figure out before releasing. Uh, what will be your governance structure? Uh, how and at which cadence will you interact with the community? Uh, it, this is all thing that as a corporation we're not necessarily used to, uh, but we have to figure out and discuss with the ASWF community how we will get there. Uh, also discussion needs to, now needs to happen in front of everyone that wants to attend. You have shared roadmap, issues, discussion. Uh, and this is something that we are not used to uh, as, uh, as a corporation. Uh, we're bringing developers on the TSC. What does that mean for them? Uh, when they realize that they will actually have to be in front of the community sometimes and to talk with them, they kind of freaked out a bit. Uh, so we needed to discuss those things with them upfront and we needed to discuss those things with the leadership team too. Uh, because I don't think it's something that initially they completely realize. Yes, we're opening the code, but we will also open a little bit part of our strategy uh, and what we wanted to do with it. Uh, so there's actually some things that we wanted to do that we pushed to phase two, but there's also some things that we decided to do into phase one because we wanted to make sure that they, that they were done. Um, so lately, uh, last week, we kind of unveiled a little bit the roadmap we had uh, for OpenRV and mine. We hope we will stick to that. At the same time, we want to be very, very flexible, discussing with the community, adapting to their need. Uh, so losing that control is something that's new for people that are not used to it and that you need to think a little bit about. So RVs out there, it's not been that long, but there's already, already some outcomes that we can see. So uh, community is already making an impact. So for those of you here and online that have been pulling the code, building it, uh, opening issues on GitHub, uh, submitting pull requests, Thanks a lot. Please keep it coming. Uh, like I said, it's very, very motivating for the team. Uh, they like it. We're dedicating a good chunk of our time to, to, to collaborate with you. And it's not the end of the road. And one of the key things that we've already uh, benefited from is that uh, support for, for new Linux distro. Uh, so originally, RV supported um, only some of them. And the community added support for Real9, Fedora, Gen2, and Arch. Uh, so we were able to accept pull requests from the community. They're not officially supported, but they are now supported uh, and we'll make sure that it keeps like that. So again, thanks a lot. And uh, to follow up on Eric and Vite, everybody's welcome to join uh, the TSC for the open review initiative or the open review initiative, depending on your, on your interest. Uh, and we'll be happy to collaborate with you on the future of open RV and of the open review initiative. Thanks a lot.